hi in this video i am going to give examples of spaces which are connected which are but not path connected these are two standard examples the first example is so called cone space or a part of the cone space and the second example is a topology sine curve these are the two standard examples one should master them the first example cone space in one of the videos when i talked about path connectedness i was given that and the proof which i'm going to give here is uh, different from the one which i gave there some students may find this easier because the earlier proof used yearly be heavily okay uh, so i let us get started So this is my channel youtube.com forward slash Kumar hits you if you want to get in touch with me you can use this email ID the title of the talk is connected spaces which are not path connected and the references as in connectedness so the first part I will try to give it today and the second part I do not know when but anyway it may be okay it may be something like uh, next day or today itself if possible okay so, so the first example let me say example one is the so-called comb space actually the one which will be part of the comb space so how does it look like okay I'll just draw the picture and then talk about it okay this is one and this is half this is one third this is one fourth etc so what do you do Maybe I should draw a line so that it will be easier. Right? And then there is this one zero. Okay. And this is at zero. And this is the point one comma zero. Of course, this is the point. 1 comma 1 okay so if you want very explicitly one can write it it is set up all x comma y in r2 so that x equal to 1 by n let me write the various things let me write a n equal to set of all x comma y in r2 so that x equal to 1 by n and 0 less than or equal to y less than or equal to 1 so all these lines so this is my a1 this is my a2 uh, this is my a4 etc right and then my l is this line x comma y in r2 so that 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 1 and y is 0 that is this is this is your l and there is also another line which you will call it as a b b is x comma y in r2 so that x is 0 and 0 less than or equal to y less than or equal to 1 that is this line this is your p right so if i take a n union a union l this is a connected subset r2 why is that because you remember each a n b and l oh this is so a n this is, oh, i wrote as a let me write it as b this is my b okay e each are line segment therefore they are, they are actually path connected they are connected and what do you see that we see that this l this is a connecting link okay a n have to intersect l b also have to intersect l therefore if i have a continuous function now 
from an union b union l this a union is over all of them to r which takes values only in plus or minus one right since l is connected okay therefore f must be a constant so for f equal to for example f of zero zero okay on l right now you start with any a n or b okay a n is connected therefore my f should be a constant but the point zero zero is going to be there or some point will be there you understand that so for example if you take a n intersect in l this will have the point one comma n comma zero right therefore f for all, any point a here it must be a constant therefore it okay f of x y for x y in a n should be equal to f of 1 comma n 0 but this is has to be f of 0 comma 0 because these two lie in l which is connected etc okay you must have seen this in my earlier lectures i just wanted to quickly go through make sure you understand do not simply assume So we have shown this space is connected. You can see why this is called comb. This is actually like a barber's comb because picture will look like this. Again, I may not be able to draw a good picture. Don't hold me against that. So it will be like this. The next one will be still closer. The next one will be still closer. The next one will be still still closer like that. So you must have seen a barber's comb. This will be somewhat the teeth will be somewhat far apart, whereas the, towards this edge they will come closer and closer. Okay so that is why it's called a comb space very good so this is connected now the space you want to look at is this take union an and take union l and take only singleton point p where p is 0 comma 1 so the picture is like that let us just look at so that all of you understand what is this picture but i will try not to be very careful in drawing picture because I expect that all of you will know then this is this, this picture this is my P and these are all my A's ok this is my L ok so this is my thing now you can ask ok first observation is X is connected Notice that my AN, union AN, union L is connected as explained earlier. Right. Now, let us look at the point P. P is an adherent point. Call this a set some, okay, Y. Adherent point of Y. That's because it's very easy. The point I have is 0, 1. And now you can have 1 comma n1 these are all in a n and in the subspace topology it converges to 0 comma 1 therefore it's an adherent point because it's a metric space so this is easy way of seeing it's an adherent point therefore this therefore p belong to the closure of y closure since y is connected y closure is connected therefore anything in between my x is between sorry y is contained in x is contained in y closure therefore this is connected this also we have seen right if y is connected uh, y is subset of x x is subset of x y closure y closure is connected and y x is also connected this also we know therefore x is connected okay so we claim it's not path connected right okay so to show x is not path connected if it's path connected what should i show give me any two points in x let us call p and q then there is a path gamma which connects p to q or q to p so if it's not path connected then what do i have to show i have to produce a pair of points p and q so that there is no path connecting p and q p 
is that clear this logic okay so the point p is is what i use is as i chose earlier as a point q you can take any point if you want let's just take uh, 1 comma 0 or 1 comma 1 okay suppose there is a path it's a path connecting p and q okay suppose it is right then i want to arrive at a contradiction is that clear now notice that gamma is a path right let's look at remember this is a continuous function therefore let's look at the set gamma inverse of singleton p this is set of all t in 0 1 so that gamma t is p itself right now this is singleton because where is p p is in x and x is given a subspace topology from r2 r2 has a metric space topology or house dot topology therefore every singleton is closed and gamma is continuous therefore inverse image of a closed set must be closed therefore this is closed okay pause review proceed now suppose i show we now we claim gamma inverse p is also open now remember where, what are this this is a subset of the set 0 1 the interval right gamma is a map from 0 1 to x and p is in x gamma inverse of p is op both open and closed and it's not empty why it's not empty because gamma connects p and q therefore for example gamma 0 may be p right if you want let us assume that gamma 0 is p and gamma 1 is q right therefore 0 belong to this therefore it's a non-empty set which is both open and closed but what do i know about 0 1 it's an interval therefore it's connected right therefore this is a non-empty subset of 0 1 connected set which is both open and closed therefore what do i know gamma inverse of p must be equal to 0 1 itself because connectedness we get this right but what does that mean in particular that means gamma 1 equal to p but our assumption is gamma 1 is q that's a contradiction do you follow that so to prove x is not path connected we chose p and q and assume there is a path gamma then we looked at gamma inverse of singleton set p we are going to prove it's yeah, it's both open and closed it's closed is obvious it's non empty is obvious you only have to prove it's open if that be the case it has to be the entire interval 0 1 because 0 1 is connected okay but that's a contradiction because gamma 1 will be p not q right okay pause review proceed so i only so what remains to prove is gamma inverse of p is open okay let us do that so to show gamma inverse of p is open okay so again uh, recall if you had attended my watch my earlier videos it's an aside i keep repeating if you notice many times if i want to show a subset u in a topological space is open the standard trick is for each x in u you find an open set ux which contains x such that ux is contained in u then u will be union of ux as x varies over u therefore u will be open this is the standard way of proving theoretically a subset is open therefore when i want to prove gamma inverse p is open what should i do start with a t in gamma inverse of p and i have to find an open set where containing 0 1 call it open set j so that t belong to j and j is contained in 0 1 yeah and remember when i say open set in j in 0 1 it is with respect to the subspace topology 
for example this will be this will be an open set or this will be an open subset or this will be an open set okay so the easier thing is to find some interval okay are you following okay right now let's look at this now what i want to do is something so this is a strategy let us go back so let us look at the picture again This must be very close, but I, my picture is not good. Okay, now choose an R positive so that let us look at the open ball BP of R. Okay, there's it does not intersect the x axis. Are you following? Okay, choose an R. Now let us look at now gamma is a map from 0, 1 to x so that gamma of 0 is p so gamma t is p let us say now right now i have 0 1 and there is some t somewhere so that gamma t is p okay this is p right now what do i know because of continuity i know there exists an interval let us say t minus delta to t plus delta intersected with 0 1 because it may be this that the case this is this it may be this in that case this is this are you following i'm being very careful okay so call this j okay so by continuity at t there is a delta positive so that if j is t minus delta to t plus delta intersected 0 1 notice that this is open in 0 1 and also connected because intersection of two intervals is connected either it's empty in which case is connected here t is common okay t lies in this interval open interval minus t minus delta t plus delta also in 0 1 okay therefore the intersection is interval containing t it's connected okay very good so this is connected right so that gamma of j is contained in bp of r this is by continuity yeah notice that these are the things which you had already seen in my earlier lecture on this thing so far no difference except gamma inverse p i want to show it's closed it's open <laughs> Is that okay? Right. Now what do I do with this? Now that I have done, okay. The now this is connected, right? Now I want to claim. Uh, yeah. Is there, maybe I should choose a T naught or something. Yeah. Let us assume a T naught belong to. Suppose gamma t naught is v, right? Continuity of t naught. Okay. Now select t belong to j. Right? What is that I want to prove? Let us make my idea clear. I want to prove gamma of j is again singleton t. Want to prove. What would that mean? That would mean this J is an open set that is completely contained in gamma inverse of P. Right? Now what is that? T naught is an arbitrary point in gamma inverse of P. Then I found an open set J such that T naught belongs to J and J is contained in gamma inverse of P. What would that mean? That means gamma inverse of P will be open. Is the idea clear? Keep the idea clear. Okay? 
right so i want to show gamma t suppose gamma t is not p then where does gamma t lie gamma t lies in x okay but what is x you know that p union an and of course union l right but remember gamma t okay the x coordinate that is pi 1 of gamma t okay, okay keep it suppose pi 1 of gamma t is not 0 yeah right well, let me just uh, do that yeah what do i want it is in p suppose it's not p right uh, yeah sorry uh, just let me make that point clear gamma of t is right now gamma of t does not lie on the x-axis therefore it does not lie in l and it's not p therefore yeah that's what i wanted therefore gamma of t belong to union a n have you understood because why gamma t lies in bp of r and is and it does not meet the x-axis right therefore it cannot meet l l is part of the x-axis right so it and it's not equal to p therefore it must be live in a m do you follow that okay hence gamma t is of the form 1 by n y do you agree with that because yeah any point where o is of course between 0 and 1 okay very good now let's look at the picture again i'm kind of magnifying the picture okay this may be my ans so your gamma t may be something by n okay so this is 1 by n this is 1 by n plus 1 right now what i want to do is i choose a c so that 1 per n by n plus 1 is less than c less than 1 by n okay so this is my c this part of l so i choose a c here then i am going to do it doesn't look nice right draw this line so let us look at u okay u plus equal to set of x y in r2 so that x is less than c and maybe we will call it u minus u plus is x greater than c right now what do you know about u minus and u plus u minus u plus r open in r2 you know how to do that right if i had attended my watch my videos earlier you know how to prove these are open sets right now let's look at your gamma of j now okay intersection u minus and gamma of j intersection u plus right i said this union is gamma j this is the first claim see these kind of details are never watered in textbooks so you may think i am doing a lot of things it's not i am try verifying each and everything which has usually not done in the books why this is the case that is because this is the place where we are using gamma j okay if i take none of this thing okay whatever is the path okay it does not meet the x-axis why do i need it how many of you understand why do i need it because the curve it's very difficult to draw if i have a draw curve it may hit the x-axis so it may hit a c and go but that cannot happen are you following 
okay these are open and that's it <coughs> because nit you look at gamma t where does it look it lies in only some yeah and that's all we have seen okay gamma t lies in x therefore it has to lie and gamma t lies only here for t here for for t in j gamma j see gamma t lies completely in bp of r you follow that so this gives a partition and what do i know i know this is open relatively open in gamma j this is also relatively open in gamma j and they are empty their intersection is empty therefore this is a disconnection of gamma j right but what do i know about gamma j it's connected so you but i have arrived at here i have shown that gamma j is not connected why was that possible it was possible because i assume there is a t in j such that gamma t is q and that q is not q gamma t is different from p right therefore that gamma t must be of the form 1 by n y therefore i was able to separate gamma t i have to i can disconnect gamma j you follow that therefore this shows hence this is a contradiction the connectedness of gamma j right therefore we conclude gamma t is p for which t therefore for every t in j so what does this mean this means that my t not belong to j and j is contained in gamma inverse of p therefore this shows okay gamma inverse of p that means t not is an interior point i usually don't use that word but anyway interior point of gamma inverse of p therefore gamma in so i start with any t not in gamma inverse of p and i showed there is an open set j so that t not belong to j and j is contained in gamma inverse of p therefore gamma inverse of p is open so go back so gamma inverse of p is not empty open and closed subset of 0 1 this is connected therefore i gamma inverse of p is all of 0 1 in particular gamma of 1 is p so it's not equal to q that's a contradiction so we were shown that the comb the comb space or part of the comb space is not connected okay T take a break i am going to take a break we will come back and the next to show this topology sign curve we will define yeah sorry take a break i <laughs> uh, will also take a break we will come back then i will define topology sign curve and show it is not connected either okay and please go through that example uh, this this proof is possibly shorter and easier to understand than my earlier proof that's why i decided to give this okay and i also said many p students many teachers follow topology sign curve so you may be going through that topology sign curve in your course you may un want to understand it better so that was another reason why i'm including okay we will come back hi let's go to the second part of the lecture in this part we are going to discuss the so-called topology sign curve i'm sure all of you might have seen the picture but i'll just show the picture and i will describe like so let us just share the screen just to see that yeah this is the topology sign curve you see that it goes and after that it See, 1 pi, 2, 1 upon 2 pi, 1 upon 3 pi, 1 upon n pi, and so on. It is going to have that. So, look, these points are 1 upon n pi, comma 0. So, you can see this converges to the point 0, comma 0, the origin. Right? Keep that picture in mind. 
if necessary i will again show it i or i may not show but let us it all depends okay so now we will just describe this rigorously and go to work so second example two is the so called topologies sin co okay so let us look at the function f of x equal to sin 1 by x for x positive okay and the picture will look exactly what you was uh, what i just now showed suppose this is 1 sin 1 and then it will keep increasing all right so it will go like this so like that okay my picture is not good but you can see these are the points where it's going to be let me just share the screen okay these are the points. okay now you can see this is y equal to 1 y equal to minus 1 okay there are, there are points where the curve touches this okay right okay ignore this picture this is not good okay anyway so let me write that thing so this is the word so topology sign curve is a let us say this is equal to a let or yes yes equal to set of all x sign 1 by x where x is positive so this is the graph of the function y equal to sine 1 by x where x is the domain is positive domain right and if you look at and the s yes closure is going to be this line the line between the on the y axis which lies between my, the line segment minus 1 to 1 on the y axis that will be in the closure because each point of that will be adherent point as you can see this picture for example if i have to get a point here I just have to look at this okay therefore what do we know therefore yes this is this is connected why this is connected because this is a continuous image okay of zero infinity under the continuous map x going to sine 1 by x right are you following yeah so so this image will be continuous again you should notice that therefore this is going to be the graph is going to be set of all such point right so what i am looking at i am looking at the map x going to x comma sine 1 by x on from 0 infinity to r2 this is a continuous map okay and its image is precisely our topology sine curve okay right very good so we know this is connected and zero zero is an adherent point point of yes therefore yes is contained in yes union singleton origin which is contained in S closure therefore this is connected okay now I want to show this is not path connected so let us call this space as X okay we want to prove X is not path connected okay so suppose possible so what do you think so as I said earlier I want to say I have to produce two points P and Q so that there is no path connecting P to Q. Right now, by now your intuition should be clear. What should be one of the points? Yeah. So we can take the point to be zero zero. You see that you should have the picture again. As I'm sorry, as I said, I can't draw well. Think of it like this. Think of it like this. Then these things come closer. Right? Like this it keeps on going. 
and this is a point this point I have to connect to some point so this may be for example 1 comma sine 1 or it could even be 1 by chi comma z 0 etc this either this point or this may be 1 by pi comma 0 somewhere okay let's not worry about any one of them it does not matter I will say right very good now what do I want to do now let's look at suppose there is a pause gamma from 0 1 to x is a continuous path so that gamma of 0 is 0 0 gamma of 1 is for example 1 by pi comma 0 okay now let's look at pi 1 let pi 1 be the natural projection of r2 onto the first factor first coordinate okay then pi 1 is continuous therefore pi 1 composite gamma from 0 1 to r is continuous yeah now what do I know pi 1 composite gamma of 0 is pi 1 of 0 0 which is 0 and pi 1 composite gamma at 1 is pi 1 of let us say 1 by pi comma 0 which is 1 by pi it could even be 1 comma sine 1 in that case it will be 1 that doesn't matter right now this is a continuous function pi 1 composite gamma this is a continuous function therefore I can apply intermediate only theorem what does it mean it takes all values between 0 and 1 by pi in this case in the other case it will be all values between 0 and 1 in the case 1 sine 1 case this is in the case 1 by pi comma 0 notice that 1 by pi comma 0 lies here because lies in yes why because 1 by pi sin of pi therefore it's 1 by pi comma 0 yeah so this is a genuine point on s and similarly 1 sin 1 is a genuine point let us do that so it takes so what are the values i want to take okay this is the place where you are going to understand it better now the point i want to take is again let me look at this picture okay the point i want to take is this point the point here which takes the peak one and the point here the peak one and the point here the peak one do you follow that okay so what are the points i want the second coordinate y coordinate should be one therefore it should be something to do with pi by two but uh, you know that it has to be of the form 2n plus half of pi okay so let us look at okay uh, 1 by 2n plus half of pi then this is 0 less than or equal to this less than or equal to 1 by pi okay as you can check if n is greater than or equal to 2 I mean if greater than or equal to 1 sorry okay therefore there exists tn where in 0 1 so that pi 1 of gamma of tn is 1 by 2n plus half of pi right remember this will be your thing and sign of that will be this goes to the numerator therefore 2n pi plus 5 by 2 right therefore sign of 2n pi plus pi by 2 by because of periodicity sine by pi by 2 therefore the y coordinate always be 1 okay are you following okay now let's look at that therefore what is gamma of tn gamma of tn is going to be 1 by 2n plus half times pi comma 1 right now let's look at only this this these are a series of vectors in r2 when do they obviously converge the x coordinate converges to 0 y coordinate converges to 1 therefore it converges to 0 1 in r2 
right? Notice that 0, 1 is not 2 and it is not in our x because if the first coordinate is x is 0, then the second coordinate must be only 0. You see that? What is our x? See, our x is this. Yes, unions in and yes consists of x comma sin 1 by x where x is positive. You understand that? So, therefore, this is not a point of x. Okay. So, the trick, please understand, this is the important trick. Then so, on, so, on. so, what we want to show is I want to say that this gamma t okay converges to a point okay a point on x in x if you want okay then that will be a contradiction would you accept it now how do I do that this is where again analysis comes you see that you cannot avoid analysis basic real analysis wherever you go okay so let us look at this now tn this is a sequence where in the closed and bounded interval 0 therefore by Bolzano and Westras there exists a subsequence convergent subsequence tnk which which is convergent remember gamma tn we know what it is what we are talking about the sequence tn in 0 1 ok so let us assume so for simplicity that is tn converges to some t naught that is I should say T and K converges to T naught there is a subsequent C and K which converges to T naught so let us just ignore that thing simply assume T and itself converges to the do you follow that ok now let us look at now where does gamma T and converges to ok maybe I will simply say T and K so that you will all know so now gamma T and I know converges to 0 comma 1 now now let us say t and k converges t naught and gamma is continuous therefore gamma t and k must converge to gamma of t naught by continuity you follow that now ga but gamma of t and k this is a subsequence of gamma of tn and this is a convergent subsequence convergent sequence right therefore the subsequence also converges to the same limit therefore where does this converge to this converge to 1 comma 0 right now we, we are through now gamma tn k converge to 1 comma 0 but because of continuity since t and k converge to t naught gamma t and k converge to t gamma t naught remember t naught must be an element of 0 1 because t and k they are in 0 1 and t and k converges to t naught therefore t naught must be in 0 1 because it's the closed set all right okay now where does this belong to it belong to x and what is x x consists of singleton 0 with the origin 0 0 union the elements of the form x sin 1 by x where x is positive now the, sorry this is 0 comma 1 I'm sorry 0 comma 1 yeah right are you following yeah that's a contradiction because if at all the first quadrant is 0 then gamma t naught must be only 0 0 since pi 1 of gamma t naught must be 0 because of this uniqueness as a limit we are using right and but gamma t naught must be here that means pi okay gamma of 
T naught must be zero zero. That's a contradiction because it is zero one. Are you following? Therefore, this contradiction shows that no such path exists. Okay. Look at the simplicity of the proof. We uh, chose T n carefully so that if you look at the picture, okay, the T n corresponded to this. Therefore, these are the points. Some T n comma one. Now the way I chose T n, it goes to zero. Therefore, the end, the, these fellows will converge to zero comma one. That's fine. But T n k's are here. There, therefore, it must have a sub -sub subsequent T n k. Then now let's look at T n k. Therefore, it, gamma T n k must converge to gamma T naught. But gamma T naught, okay, gamma T n k converge to gamma T naught. Are you okay? But gamma T n k is a subsequence of a convergent sequence gamma T n, which converges to 0, 1. Therefore, gamma T n k should also converge to 0, 1. Right? You follow that? But you, by uniqueness as a limit, Therefore, gamma t naught must be 0, 1, but I know gamma of t naught must be an element of x, but 0, 1 is not an element of x. That's a contradiction. Have you understood that proof? So, the trick is gamma t n is a very good sequence, it produces a point outside x. Okay, so it converges to a point outside x. Uh, that fact I want to use to arrive at a contradiction. So the trick is go to a subsequence of Tn, consider Tnk, that will converge to T naught. Therefore, gamma Tnk must converge to gamma T naught. But since gamma Tnk is a subsequence of a conversion sequence gamma Tn, which converges to 0, 1, gamma T naught must be 0, 1 by uniqueness of the limit but that's a contradiction yeah so we approved both the cases i hope you appreciate okay we will meet again